Hello and welcome to vlog number 49. I don't know if you're familiar with the term keeping mum. Perhaps it's particularly British, I'm not sure. It means keeping your mouth shut about something and it's a term that can be accurately applied to my mum as I found out this week. My mum passed away peacefully on Monday morning and amongst the messages of condolence and support that I received came one from my youngest nephew. Amongst other things he said of my mum, she was incredibly proud of the awareness that you're raising Ian. We all are. I had never mentioned my YouTube videos to mum. I was brought up to believe that all drugs are bad and to be avoided at all costs. So I didn't want her to know that I was taking cannabis to treat my Parkinson's disease symptoms. I thought it was something that she would frown upon and I didn't want to give her any cause for concern. So I replied to his message saying that I didn't realise that she was aware of it. Had to show that her son was a viral sensation, didn't I? He texted back. And so, all the time that I had been careful not to mention this in front of her, she had known and had been keeping mum, presumably because she felt that my nephew had given her privileged information and she didn't want to land him in it. The night before my mum died, my wife and I were sitting at her bedside chatting to the nurse who was looking after her during the night. The nurse had had a lot of experience in looking after people with Parkinson's and we were discussing the Parkinson's medications that my mum had been taking and the side effects that she had suffered with them. Cannabis is the best medication for Parkinson's, but don't tell my boss I said that, she said. You could have knocked me down with a feather. I was so surprised to hear those words coming from an experienced healthcare professional. Not because I didn't believe them to be true, but because of the stigma associated with them. True, she had, only half jokingly, said don't tell my boss I said that. But her opinion was openly expressed to me, a stranger who may not have held the same views as she did. It is precisely this kind of openness that will bring about, eventually, the legalisation of cannabis if only for medicinal purposes. There is still a long way to go and much work to be done on overcoming this stigma. My son, who is aware of my use of cannabis and supports me wholeheartedly, came to visit me a couple of months ago before embarking on his travel to the Far East and Australia. We were discussing the stigma associated with cannabis, even amongst those who use it medicinally like I do. I reflected that I would not feel comfortable offering cannabis to my son, but I wouldn't and didn't hesitate to offer him a beer and to sit and drink alcohol which is far more harmful with him. I think it is an indication of the mountain that has to be climbed before cannabis becomes acceptable. It is a measure of the power of propaganda that I, somebody who uses and advocates the use of cannabis for medicinal purposes and who knows that the freely available legal drugs tobacco and alcohol are infinitely more harmful to health should feel this way. Figures from the National Office for Statistics show that there were 7,327 deaths in 2016 in the UK alone that were directly attributable to alcohol and approximately 100,000 deaths that were attributable to tobacco in 2015. Contrast this with the number of deaths attributable to cannabis usually claimed to be zero, but in my quest for balance I managed to find a newspaper article that reported the first cannabis related death in the UK in 2014. Not as reliable a source as the National Office for Statistics, but I can live with a statistic like that. If that statistic doesn't make you wonder why your government is lying to you about cannabis, then it really should. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.